Well, it's time to continue on with my gaming memories here. As I have this playlist right here, where I have all my past personal vlogs, where I just shared with you my gaming memories, and I'm just continuing on my evolution of when I owned video games, and in some cases video games that I still have, and in this case, I still do have some Nintendo DS games and 3DS games. I had a few different consoles for the uh, Nintendo DS, because I actually did buy the original one that came out there, and I think I remember I had that one, and then I ultimately got the 3DS to upgrade. You know, remember that 3D, uh, remember that 3D craze that we had, and Nintendo found a way to, uh, have it so you can do it without glasses there, but ultimately I never used it. It was just a, a gimmick there and, you know, just play with your eyes and mind too much. And then I ultimately I upgraded to the 3D SXL there, which I'll show you that system here as well, but I don't have as many titles on this one to share with you. I do remember some of them that I had that I traded in and, you know, there's person log number 67. This is my gaming memories with the Nintendo DS and 3DS series. I definitely have a smaller library here and, uh, you know, as you get older and have more responsibilities, bills and all that wonderful life stuff you got to worry about, you just have less time to play games here and, you know, you got other things you got to pay for and there's also other things I'd rather do here and this is my last uh, system game gaming memories here. My next personal vlog I'll have to put some time in uh, listing things because I want to do my gaming memories overall and go over titles that I missed for each system here and I know it's always inevitable. I'm gonna miss them so I'm gonna have to rewatch those gaming memories and remember oh I should have mentioned that title or that title here but uh, let's get to it. So I'm gonna show you my DS collection, remember games that I had that I played and now I have a very, very small 3DS collection here, but I think it's a pretty good 3DS collection here. It's just, you know, don't have the time to play video games like I used to as you get older, and that's why it's time we live game members here. So uh, let's start with the DS here. Well, kind of going off back order here. Well, here's a fun pickup and play game that you could say it's underrated. It was, I remember buying it for less than 20 bucks at Walmart here. Clubhouse games. There's definitely 42 games in here. Ranging from, you know, card games, you know, dominoes, you know, it's just, you know, kind of a bunch of board games all in one here. This one's definitely an underrated collection. It's perfect for a handheld, you know, to have all kinds of games here. I mean, you got card games, board games, variety, action, and single player games. You know, chess, spades, backgammon, poker, and darts. You have all that in one collection here, and uh, I recommend it. You know, it's a quick pick up and play there, you know. I mean, especially if you download apps on your smartphone here, but if you still have a DS, this one's definitely an underrated game. Nice collection just of, you know, clubhouse games it's called, and, you know, bar games, card games. Well, I definitely had to get this one. Who made this one? Uh, I forget, it wasn't rare, rare, but got to relive Diddy Kong Racing DS here. And definitely, I pre-ordered this game because I... Definitely, when I saw this was going on DS, I had to get it, because I definitely enjoyed the uh, version on the Nintendo 64, but the beauty with this DS is it seems to find a way to take great Nintendo 64 games and make it better. And uh, I know there's like a custom track you make with TT, which is the time tracker uh, racing name, and eventually you unlock that, because I remember doing that in the Nintendo 64 here, but uh, yeah, Diddy Kong Racing DS makes a great game even better. Well, I didn't play this one as much, but uh, here's the Phantom Hourglass for the uh, Legend of Zelda series here. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of the sequel to the Wind Waker in a way. This is all this is. It's a sequel to that on, in play handheld mode here. So, uh, you know, that's basically all it is. That's all the best way I can say it is. It's basically a sequel to Wind Waker. I also have the Spirit Tracks here for DS, which, uh, you know, it's just another unique adventure here, but you're on the rail here. Draw out the train tracks and find your way there, so, uh, this is kind of an innovative way to play with the second screen, the touch screen there, which kind of eventually almost 
inspired the Wii U, which I didn't get it. I just, it didn't appeal to me, plus, you know, cost, money, you know, the economy, and just lack of time here. But I heard that that might have been a great call here, because I didn't hear good things as much on the Wii U as the Wii. This might sound a lot of consoles here, but, uh, so yeah, this kind of, you know, is a handheld on the go. They can use the second screen there. Of course, uh, i got to get Mario Kart on the go. This is actually a great, uh, great Mario Kart on the go here. I mean, I think this, I mean, I'm not too sure if I'll ever rate, rate the uh, Mario Kart games here, but I think I actually enjoyed this one a little more than the one on Advance there for the Game Boy Advance. But, uh, you know, definitely, uh, it's just, you know, the, when it comes to the second screen on these games, it's more just to show your stats instead of actually playing it. I think you actually, if you could, use the touch screen to drive, but it's not practical. Uh, of course, I got the uh, new Super Mario Brothers on the handheld, which is kind of, you know, the continuation of one that's on the Wii here. So, uh, you know, definitely uh, get that same kind of that side scrolling adventure there, but uh, I know that. They definitely have used this format a lot here, but uh, kind of jazzes up the classic format there, but uh, this is something with the old format that I still like the best. I, I grew up with it. That's all i got to say. This was one of the launch titles, but uh, actually, I, this is where I got the, my exposure to the original Rayman here. I mean, it's... I think I have the... Uh, version on the PlayStation Network on my PSP. But this one was was one of the launch titles. It's a, it's a fun game, but uh, it uh, you would never be able to use it to your touchpad to play along this one, but it's basically, uh, I'm not too sure if it's the first one or the second one it's a port of, but uh, it's one of the earlier Rayman games that was on the PlayStation that uh, was ported on here. Of course, uh, I gotta have some Sonic. How about uh, Sonic Classic Collection? One, two, three, and Sonic Knuckles on the go here. It's essentially, that's all it is. It's just a collection on the go there. So uh, I know that uh, that's all it is. It's nice to have it all on the go there, and you can play Knuckles in all the games. Well, here's a really, I actually like this one for an original Sonic game. Sonic Rush. This one was definitely a very fast pace, hence the name Rush. Make Sonic even faster? Is that possible? Well, yeah, this one definitely was fun to play along with. He uses a double screen to almost add more to the adventure there. Plus, a wicked soundtrack that you can hit up on the uh, this platform to listen to. Especially the first level, it really gets you into the mood for some Sonic Rush here. Well, this one, I didn't like it as much as Sonic Rush, but... This is pretty much Sonic Rush, but just the with just tie in the adventure. Sonic Rush definitely emphasized more just being fast. This one kind of has more of that adventure mode to it. I think if I had more time to invest in it, but uh, I liked the Sonic Rush better than the Sonic Rush Adventure here. So a couple of games that I had, that I still have for the uh, Nintendo DS. Well, this was a launch title, and I was impressed that they were actually able to put this on the cart here. And you know, we'll talk about making classic games even better. Super Mario 64 DS. They made Super Mario 64 and made it better. This game's even more expanded and deeper. You know, you get to play all four characters. And, you know, you, sometimes you need to play all four characters to advance in the game here. But uh, if there's a way, you can, and it has mini games in there. I mean, it's basically, they took the formula of Super Mario 64. They made an awesome game. And even more, made it more awesome for more modern, which I like to see more of that. You know, take what I already know and add to it. So I'm definitely impressed that you get this all on the go here. Once again, you can't really, you could use the second screen to control, but it doesn't, some games work as well. And then, of course, you got to get yourself some Tetris here. And uh, this definitely is just a faster paced Tetris, you know, from the original. Original Tetris, you know, that's one of the nice things that the Russians made and gave to us. A good little Tetris, you know, jam up the uh, original song there, you know, Decaf 5 did that as well. But uh, 
Yeah, definitely different modes of Tetris here, and you see the old 8-bit graphics in this one. So, uh, this definitely, uh, you know, kind of takes a classic and adds on to it and modernizes it, sir. But I know other games that I remember I had for the DS that I don't have anymore in the trade in. Well, I did remember Ridge Racer DS. That was, you know, that classic Namco game. But, uh, once again, that's another game you could theoretically use the touchpad to control the steering wheel, but it, it uh, wouldn't work well. And then I remember having, I think it was, a uh, Yoshi's Touch and Go. I mean, it was fun, but it was too short. And that game definitely uh, made use of the touchscreen very well. And how to advance in that game. We made it customized, but uh, it just got too short and I overplayed, outplayed it and it eventually got traded in. And I think those are... There wasn't too many games that I think I remember having with the uh, DS that I traded in. I mean, this is... I mean, I, well, I had one more time to... Uh, Play those games on the go there when I worked security and I was at a, you know, other at a building with lots of downtime or warehouse, and, and you get tired of reading the paper. And this is before social media and YouTube and Wi-Fi on the go, where you can entertain yourself. I mean, it'd be different now if I, if I, you know, had the 22 year old of me working one of my crummy jobs while I was going to college here, and now with emulators, I can play those on the go more. So. uh yeah, that's that was why I had some time to play games while in college there, just because of my uh, crummy jobs at the time. You know, trying to get by and kind of still feel like now, especially this stuff going to me. But uh, that's my DS collection that I have. So uh, this is the system that I have. Well, this is the 3DS XL here. Actually, it still feels like a heavy box here, but uh, you know, there was rumors that they were going to make it bigger and bigger and. Because I had the original DS, the you know the gray one, and then I had the 3DS, which basically, you know, was an upgrade to it. But then I had the larger version of it. So this is the system I have here. Of course, I have it in red here. You know, it's my favorite color, as you can see. It's also another. I think that's personal blog number 29 about red is my favorite color. So uh, yeah, this is the system that I have for it. So I have a smaller. 3DS collection here, and uh, you know, let's continue on the theme of making classic games better. Well, I got the best Zelda game on 3DS, and uh, man, they made this game even better on here. I mean, it's updated, and uh, I'll tell you right now, I didn't get Majora's Mask on 3DS, but it's, I mean, it's this is where you almost have to debate is you know. How much, you know, can you have a handheld game? Because as great as this game is, and I've said it many times, it, it's the best Zelda game, in my mind, and have it on the goal here, but it almost seems really, really big to have it on the goal here, unless you have a portable charger. Let's say, unless you have a long-haul flight, and you can plug it in, and I could see that, but, uh, you know, just pick it up here and there. I mean, it, it, that's where it gets a little harder to have it, but, man, it makes this game even better on here. And the press state, now you can have this on the go now. But now with the technology and memory, you know, now storage getting bigger and cheaper and smaller. And that's where you get the, understand the idea that you can get these games and that it's not as big. And then, of course, I got uh, Super Mario 3D Land here. I mean, I never used the 3D feature. Maybe sometimes with cinematics, but, uh, you know, that, that, that uh, fad is dead now. That's something you can take from the early 2010s there. I mean, the reason why no one liked 3D is because for 3D TV, you need like $200 especially glasses here. And you're not going to buy a bunch of glasses for a couple hundred bucks to, uh, when you have people over and all wear glasses to watch TV. And it's like you have to be at a certain angle. I mean, it doesn't do any good for background TV and it was too expensive here. But uh, not for that, but uh, I got Super Mario 3D Land here, which kind of is, you know, the modern... Super Mario Lands, but well, you have this on the go here. Of course, uh, another game that uh, they made a classic game better on the go is the Star Fox 64 3D. Basically another game where they... It's the same game that you remember on the Nintendo 64, but they improved the graphics and make it more modern and added a few more elements there. Well, we have a couple more games for the 3DS here. 
I got Pilot Wings Resort here. It's kind of just uh, takes that uh, same resort that was in the Wii Sports Resort there, and you know, and that's on to the Pilot Wings from. I remember playing the Nintendo 64 version, which I know was one of the launch titles here. But this one just kind of gives a nice, nice race and adventure in there. I didn't, I didn't play the Pilot Wings for the Super Nintendo, but uh, and then the last one here is uh, I had to get Mario Kart, Mario Kart 7, which is kind of like the modern Mario Kart on the go here. So uh, yeah, it's not as much of a 3DS collection here, and I don't think I uh, I bought too many. 3DS games here, and I know that uh, there's the Wii Stop that you can put classic games on the console there, but uh, you know, that's the thing, it's, you know, when you're always on the go, and I just don't like carrying all this around with me. I used to, you know, when I, as I said, I had my security job or downtime in college there, but, uh, you know, now I just don't like carrying that around me, and there's a stigma too if you're older and playing games here, but the emulation thing seems to uh, appeal to me more as well. So, and, you know, we're slowly getting away from uh, physical cartridges here, which uh, also, if you watch Review Tech USA on this platform here, I mean, I mean, there's going to eventually be cloud gaming, but it's just a matter of how to make it so that you want one. Of the, the only problem with cloud gaming is that, you know, yeah, you can play it on demand and on the go any time. Well, what happens if the cloud's gone and you lose all your progress and money and that? I still want to be able to have it digitally, you know, forever, somehow. But yeah, that's just my quick gaming memories for the Nintendo 3DS, 3, uh, DS and 3DS here. And that's all the collection I have here. There's some sweet games, but, you know, I just don't have the time to uh, play games, video games like I used to there. So, uh, so anyway... If you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey here, Home of the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders here, just make sure you hit like, subscribe, follow along here. If you're returning or new, I say thanks for watching here, and subscribe and follow along to hit that bell icon to be notified as soon as this Calgary sports fan uploads anything. I mostly do Calgary sports, obviously, you know, with the, with the teams, you know, game recaps, stories, or whatever, or maybe looking back at dates in history. As well, personal blogs, where I've gone through my gaming memories phase here, and I do have planned to do one more gaming memories personal blog for this, you know, batch right now, where I'll look back at all the games overall and what I missed, and uh, talk about the future of gaming in my life. As well, you know, do attempt to comedy and uh, you know share my experiences. Let's say at a sporting event where I'm on holidays. Or there might be, you know, the odd other video that just it's a miscellaneous that you might want to talk about as well. So if that sounds like everything you're interested in, just make sure you hit like, subscribe, and follow along here. Go Flames Go, as I have Flames gear on. And as I say, I'll see you in the next video here. And game on, or brought back some memories for yourself.